Okay, so today I'm going to talk about um, an exciting new feature in PedBat to do with optimizing your carbon footprint. Um, so a few of you are probably aware that I've added this new thing where you can track your carbon consumption. So currently the UK national grid provides data as to the, um, the sort of level of carbon per kilowatt hour approximately on the grid in your region. Um, and so this can now be shown in the uh, PREBAT plan and it can show your sort of total carbon consumption or indeed uh, reduction if you export more than you import during the day. So this is in kilograms, starts from midnight and shows my day. Um, you can see it going down a little bit here as I'm exporting and in some cases um, when the, the solar is running tomorrow and then the forced export bringing it down, it also goes up when I'm charging, obviously. <clears throat> now to make, make this work initially, you have to add the integration for it. So um, there's some information in the uh, documentation, but um, what you'll find is that there's a Carbon Intensity UK. I've taken the fork of this one, um, which is actually, um, a, um, a version that's updated more recently than the original. Um, and you see all it does is it creates one device, which is in Carbon Intensity UK. Um, and it should, the data in here gives you the forecast as well as it tracking where it was. Um, so I think you can, um, if you look in the, um, the documentation on GitHub as well, um, then, uh, you should be able to find that. Um, so one thing you need to do also is set it in the apps.yaml. So the setting called carbon intensity, and that's actually going to um, point to the um, device entry here that we're talking about. So if I go to my file editor, and then um, if I have a search for carbon, I can carbon intensity. So this is in the template now. So once this is running, it'll pick it up. And then there is the toggle in, um, in PrevBat. Um, so if I go into the dashboard here and I look at my controls and switches, then you can see carbon enable. When you turn that on, it will appear in the plan. So that's all good and you can track it. It's very exciting, but what happens if you want to optimize for it? I mean, some of us um, buy um, battery to save money. Some people do it for environmental reasons. A lot of people maybe do it for a bit of both. So what you can do is weight your carbon consumption against the, um, the plan and see if it changes. Um, so this is my standard plan. Um, and actually, it's fairly good as standard because you can see my... Um, in terms of the exporting tends to happen mostly at the high carbon times anyway, but the importing is obviously happening at night, which actually isn't the best because it's mainly using gas, um, but it's cheaper. So if I wanted to change that, I could um, go into the controls and I could look at carbon metric and this sets the pence per kilogram. So some values, say 10 pence might be a starting point you can go up or down accordingly. So let's have a look at the plan now and we'll see how it updates based on that. So here the plan's updated now and it's made a bit of a difference to what I'm doing. Um, so I'll see. Um, it's had a little bit of impact and it's actually trying to discharge now at the high carbon times just after the cheap rate as well. So my battery level is running a bit lower, but I've got enough solar to cover me for the day. Um, so it's not too bad. Um, so I've actually shifted some of the discharge into this high carbon intensity time in the morning, and then running on my solar during the day. Um, and then I could even change this a bit further if I wanted to. Let's go. Okay, let's go a bit higher now. I'm going to say 50 pence per kilogram. It means I really care about it. And let's let the plan update again. Okay, so our plan's updated again. Now what's happening is I'm getting even less charging. So now I'm running the battery down pretty low and picking it all up from solar. 
So actually that's a pretty good plan for reducing their carbon footprint. Um, but obviously if the weather turns out worse, this could lead to a flat battery and more cost, but it's actually fairly low carbon around this time. So in terms of that trade-off, it may not be so bad. Um, so uh, it gives you various opportunities. You can play around with that and, and change the way that your system's managed um, accordingly. Um, so I'm gonna put this one um, back a bit because that was probably going a bit too far for me in terms of risk, but you can play around with it um, and uh, see how you can optimize. Um, the other thing that you can optimize if you are in expert mode, um, there is uh, something called battery cycle, metric battery cycle cost. The default is half a pence and you only get this in expert mode, but if you increase this, it will tell for about to charge and discharge your battery less. It's basically saying this is the cost of charging or discharging. So half a pence means half a pence for charge, half a pence for discharge. It costs you an extra 1p per kilowatt hour virtually to, to use the battery. If you put this up to two, it's kind of getting up to 4p per kilowatt hour. You're going to find a lot of times where the higher this number is, the more grid use you're going to get and the less battery use you're going to have. And obviously zero is just going to not account for that at all and just do the cheapest. Um, so um, that one's one worth keeping in mind as well in terms of how the optimization works. Um, so um, anyway, I think this is actually quite an exciting feature because I think it's the first um, system in the world to be able to optimize for carbon footprint as well as um, costs. Um, so it might be um, interesting to play around with that and see what people think um, about that. You can see I'm back to the 10p one now. Um, I'm getting a slightly different plan. Um, so it's quite interesting. It should work on different tariffs as well. Well, thank you very much for watching. Um, obviously, um, have a look at the release that contains this version 7.18.0 or beyond. Um, there's also some other fixes to do with preventing a forced discharge when the car's actually charging, which in some cases people were seeing that being allowed to happen, um, which um, obviously is not the best thing to do. In some cases, it might get away with it because you have enough solar and battery to cover it. But <clears throat> that's only if allow car charging from battery is turned off. Um, so I'm just going to show that switch while we're talking about it, allow car to charge from battery if that's off. If you turn that on, then it'll do whatever it thinks is cheapest, even if it involves charging the car from your battery. Um, so keep that one in mind. I think off is the default anyway. Calculate discharge on charge slots is the other one. That's the one I've got on currently. And you can see I get a discharge during the charge period. So I'm cycling the battery because I've got enough time to get to 100%. Um, if you turn that one off, then, um, then it won't allow that and you'll get a slightly different plan. Um, maybe I'll just show that, just wait for this one to update. And you can see the, the difference in the plan now where we'll just end up with a full charge slot. That's interesting because I'm still optimizing for carbon, but I'm not gonna allow the discharge during that period either. So it's gonna move the discharges around a little bit, I think. And there we go. Now you can see the charge slot is with no discharges in it, and the discharge is happening before and after to get the highest carbon period for my export. Um, don't know why you get this little bit around here. This is possibly to do with um, some sort of clipping that might be happening on my system because it's a hybrid. So it may be it's trying to lose a bit of the battery because obviously um, then it'll have a bit of space for when you get some clipping. So yeah, that's uh, another one that's um, worth uh, looking at to decide what you want to do. I keep it on, but not everybody likes that. Um, and um, the other thing is to worth mentioning is the charts. Um, now you can see on the power chart something that's a bit different from before. You can see these wibbly lines here on the grid. Best is wibbling up and down and the PV best. Um, in some cases is um, 
And this is because there's this new, um, I've changed it to show every five minutes rather than every 10, so you can actually see the new feature where it um, essentially modulates your predicted load up and down, and it's meant to represent a bit of an uneven load where you're turning things on and off um, to try and get a slightly more accurate prediction. It's done this with the cloud model with DV for a while, but it's based on the difference between the worst and the best forecast. Whereas with the load, it's more based on your your um, standard deviation of your load over the, the next um, eight hours predicted, but it does that. And so it helps to just produce some slightly more accurate modeling. Um, hopefully that's useful as well. Well, I'll uh, really finish this time. And um, thanks very much for watching. And um, please uh, I'll see you. Um, visit the page and um, join the Facebook group. Um, you can see the links here to all that, including the YouTube channel. Bye now.